Good evening, Matanistas. Only a fortnight ago, I was in the Swiss Alps listening to those cattle bells, waiting for Julie Andrews to appear and sing Edelweiss, watching City also cruise to a 3-1 win in Bern, and tonight is the return fixture. It's the back-to-back -back phase of the group stage of the Champions League. City tonight take on the young boys of Bern. Could this be a banana skin? I don't think so, but join me and find out in today's Match Day vlog. Okay, Matanistas, today it's going to be beer first before food because the restaurant I want to go to, which are putting on a bit of a spread and a special effort for me tonight, is open a little bit later than normal because they've had to prepare for me. I'm in the suburb of Burnage in South Manchester, very close to the railway station on Fog Lane, and not only do they have a great Indian restaurant, a great little real ale and craft beer bar called Reasons to be Cheerful, so while we're waiting for the restaurant to open, let's have a pre-match pint, shall we? Okay, Matanistas, if you find yourself in this part of Manchester, well worth a visit. They usually have two or three casks on and a number of kegs, wine and spirits, I think, for those who don't like drinking beer. Anyway, I've been drinking rather more Guinness and Stout than usual recently, having of course been to Dublin. But often the English Stouts and Porters can be very interesting, of course. Guinness is mass-produced and it's a bit one-dimensional, even though it is a great drink. And you'll find that the individually crafted porters, stouts, or whatever you want to call them, can adopt very different flavours. This one's a very dry stout called Black Steel. Yeah, that's a lovely tipple. It's dry, but it's slightly more hoppy than an Irish stout. I definitely have another one of these, except they have a keg stout as well, which I'm going to bring you after I've talked a bit of football with you, Matadistas. Well, for once, folks, I don't have that much to say pre-game until the team news comes out about the football. I thought Young Boys Away gave us a pretty good run for our money, but at the Etihad, we are different gravy. I mean, haven't we won, like, 21 or 22 on the run? We're hitting the groove now. we demolished Bournemouth, and I hope I get to see Jeremy Docker in action tonight. He was so exciting. I couldn't go. I had to watch it on Match of the Day. But I'm hoping tonight I get the real deal from him again. Again. He has fitted into the team so quickly. And as I said, I thought young boys played a lot better than I expected. They gave us a good game for about 70 minutes and we managed to eventually grind them down. I don't see them doing anything tonight. And if you look at the group, Group G of the Champions League, City are in command. We're on nine points. We've had an away win at Leipzig, so even if we slip up against them, they're going to have to win by a big margin because the calculation if we finish level with Leipzig is how we did over the two games, I think, with away goals counting. Leipzig are away at Red Star Belgrade tonight. That could be a bit of a banana skin for them, but if they slip up, then I think a home win tonight will actually seal the deal for winning the group, let alone qualifying. Young boys and Red Star stranded on one point, so I think we're actually already through. It's just about winning the group. I think Guardiola will field a strong team tonight because he wants to get this over with and done so he can rest people for the hectic Christmas and New Year schedule during which 
which there's a mid-December trip to Belgrade just before the World Club Championship in Saudi Arabia. I think he'll want to rotate for that. Anyway, Muttonistas, we have to try the keg stout as well as the cast stout because I wouldn't be doing my job properly. So we'll move on to that and then go for a meal at an incredibly good curry house which most of you will probably have never heard of. Okay, on to my second pint, the aperitif before dinner. This is very interesting, it's called London Black. It's a keg beer, some sort of nitro porter I believe, and it's what everybody used to drink in London in terms of porter or stout before Guinness came along. It's making a revival, but is it up to the mark? Oh yeah, that is beautiful. And I understand they have an app which can tell you where it's served. Obviously this bar keeps its beer well, but I think this, preferable to Guinness, except at the very best places in Ireland. Okay, Muttonistas, that London Porter was absolutely on the money. I really loved it. I'd say the best Guinness in Ireland is better, but for stuff that you get in the UK, it was as good as anything. Anyway, enough beer, on to the meal. We are at an incredibly good Indian restaurant that goes so far under the radar it's untrue. We are next, as you can see, to Bernard Station, and the food they do here is as authentic as it can be. Most Indian restaurants that you go to in the UK or Pakistani or Bangladeshi. This is traditional Indian. Okay Matanistas, we have put the order in. Now they cook the food freshly to order, none of this quick frying up of stuff to wheel it out quickly to customers. So we've opened a bottle of white wine and we're gonna have a quick slurp before we get started. But that does not mean I am going to scrimp in any way. We are going to have starters and a main course and get you on time to the match at the Etihad. Okay, Matanises, the starters have arrived and I cannot wait to show you them. We have tandoori king prawns. King prawns normally ridiculously expensive in British restaurants but reasonable value here. And something they do really well, tandoori lamb chops, very nicely marinated. And finally we have one of my personal favourites, a classic Indian street food dish, samosa chaat. Crushed samosas, yoghurt, tamarind chutney, pomegranate, sev, which is like toasted vermicelli, and some crushed chickpeas. Well, since I have a little bit of white wine left, we're going to start with the prawns and the samosa chaat. Look at that, just look at that, isn't that juicy? Oh well, beautifully marinated. As I expect, those lamb chops will be as well. Okay, now for that samosa chaat, my favourite. Every time I'm in India or Pakistan, I look for these chaats all over the place. And if you can be bothered to look through my back catalogue of videos, I have produced a video called The Charts of Karachi when in Pakistan. Mm, spiciness, sourness, sweetness, all melded into one. This chaat stands up to anything I've had in the subcontinent. And now, on to the acid test, the lamb chop. Lamb chop tikka, lamb chop tandoori. You can get in any Indian restaurants, but if it's a hallucinogenic strain of red with crumbs of marination over it, then it's probably not done properly. But here, I have never been disappointed with the lamb chops. And nor have I been today. That is quite exquisite and deserves a quick slurp of red, which I've magically transferred to. The mains have come and well, they look so good and they smell so good. Obviously on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you're watching this, I cannot transmit the smell, but take it from me, it's good. We have a chicken biryani. We have to break through the crust to get into that and we will do that shortly. We have a Kerala fish curry, dark, spicy, 
we have a bacon butter, a dry aubergine curry, and a lamb handy. Now the word handy refers to the dish it's cooked in. So the handy is an actual pot, not any style of curry like vindaloo, madras, or whatever you tend to like. We have some different breads. We have a garlic naan, we have roti, and we are supposed to have lacha parata, which hasn't arrived. And with the biryani, they provide a yogurt, a cumin yogurt called raita, and that is supposed to temper the biryani. But I would put it to you, Matanitas, that the biryani is so good here that you don't need the raita. I just eat it on its own. In fact, I would say biryani is their speciality dish. If you're not sure what to order, you cannot go wrong with one of their prawn, vegetable, mutton, chicken biryanis. Right, better take a quick slurp to get us going. Cometh the moment, cometh the lacha parata, a swirled buttery bread, which is absolutely my favourite. Oh, okay, we have to start with the speciality dish, the biryani. Now, the trick with biryani is to cook it for a long time, slowly, with the spices at the bottom, the meat all mixed in at the bottom, and then the rice on top, and the herbs and the onions to finish and that way you get the rice to infuse all the flavours. It's so important you do that, and at the majority of UK Indian restaurants, all they do is stick the rice in a wok with some chicken and you end up with some sort of chicken pilau. But let's try this. It's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. And this, Matanistas, is as good a biryani as I have tasted in the UK. Now then, Matanistas, one good thing about this restaurant, in fact, one of the many good things about this restaurant, is that they change the menu frequently. And something new on the menu, which I haven't had before here, is the Kerala fish curry. I've been to Kerala, really love the food down there. The spices, the mustard seeds, the coconut. Hmm. Again, right on the menu. Okay, lamb desi karahi, a dish popular mainly in northern India. So you can see that they've matched the geography of India to provide a selection from the whole of the country. Lacha parata in hand, my favourite bread. Time for the lamb now. So rich, meaty, buttery. Mutton Easter's. If you don't come here sometime to try a meal, you're committing a crime. Now, finally, Matanistas, Bagan Bathan, very, very famous Indian dish. You don't see it in too many Indian restaurants in the UK, but it is available in some. Crushed aubergine and spices, one of my favourite vegetables, especially because it really does soak up the spices and flavours of whatever you cook it in. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. And I am going to take a quick slurp and then head off in an Uber to the Northern Monk because, yet again, I'm running short of time. Come on, city. Okay, Matanista's got carried away as usual at dinner, so I didn't go to the Northern Monk as usual tonight, but some of you complain that I don't go to the hardcore supporters' bars. So what could be more hardcore than going to Mary D's just outside the ground? Now then, folks, I'm actually here 20 minutes, no, even 15 minutes before kickoff, so the bar's pretty empty now. Often on a good day, particularly a Saturday afternoon, there's a raucous atmosphere in here. The team news, well, it's been out for a while now, no Rodri, that's the big thing, and Johnny Stones is going to step up to the plate in the centre of midfield alongside Matteo Kovacic. I fully understand that. We need to find a way of playing if Rodri can't play. Rico Lewis, a recall at right that Kyle Walker dropping to the bench he deserves that he's been playing well and the big news at front is that Erling Haaland didn't have as serious an injury as thought and leads the line anyway I'm pretty confident in City winning tonight but I'd better neck this point
as you know, Matanista so refused to cover that evil anthem from UEFA, so time for a swift half instead. In fact, a very swift half. Okay, we're seven minutes in, City should have been one nil up by now, Grealish should have scored there. But also, the team news I was given was bollock, just Carl Walker is indeed playing. Ron! Ron! Why isn't that a penalty? Close to being a penalty just outside the area, and two incredible saves to stop that from going in. far away from this and that looked like a penalty. For years we had problems with putting penalties away but now we've got a man who can sort it out. 1-0 City, just one more and this game is over. City have had most of the game, and then Phil Foden skipped round the whole of the young boys' defence and curled it beautifully into the corner along the ground. 2 0 City, game over, methinks. Okay, half time, Mutton Easters, and not much to report, to be honest. I thought for most of the game I was about to report on how well young boys have contained City. And defended solidly, they were compact at the back, just made the one mistake for the penalty, but that wasn't so. They left Phil Foden loose at the right, and he cut in beautifully, skinned the young boys defender, put City 2-0 up, and I can't see any way back for young boys from here. Pleased to see City have coped without Rodri, and it's a necessary experiment actually. Rico Lewis, Johnny Stones, Matteo Kovacic are doing well. Whether we can do this against stronger teams, I'm not so sure. Without wishing to be disrespectful to the young boys, because you know, if you win the championship in Switzerland and you get to the stage, you aren't a shabby team. Anyway, also glad to report that with this efficient dispensing system, I'm going to half-time point. City scores so many goals just after half time and it was a beautifully crisp finish across the goalkeeper into the top corner, 3-0, well who knows how many this is going to be. And it's just going from bad to worse for young boys, really bad. Bad late challenge. Maybe he couldn't pull out, but that's a clear second yellow and a red. Down to ten men. I mean, where are they going from here when it's 3-0 to City? City, City,
Well, Matanistas, I have retired to Weatherspoon's Piccadilly. Not ideal, but late on a Tuesday, it sometimes needs must. I'm on the Mad Goose Purity Pale Ale. Not bad, quite hoppy. And what can I surmise about that match? Well, City did a professional job, ground them down. Young boys were very, very unambitious, very defensive. Did they have a shot on target? I'm not sure they even did. 2 0 up, of course, at half time. And Harlem knocked in that beautiful third goal. Then the match became very, very sterile. Not much to report about at all. City happy to pass it around. Young boys happy to keep the score down. And City qualified for the next round of the Champions League. Not at all unexpected. We still haven't won the group, though because Leipzig won and are three points behind us. 12-9-1-1 are the points in this group. Very, very lopsided. But I expect City to do the business in the next game at home to Leipzig. Just a point needed. Only downside, really, is Johnny Stones being injured again. Guardiola said this looks like a bad one. And I have to say, he was the man who could step up to the plate and control the midfield with Rodri or without Rodri. Rodri was rested, so we don't have to worry that there's going to be some sort of void there, but it's going to be a bad loss. It was good to give Bernardo, Rodri and others a rest, but whether we could do without any of them? Well, probably not. This was not the sternest of tests. So it's a bit unlikely it's told Guardiola anything about what he can do in the event of another injury crisis. Anyway, Matanistas, after that surprisingly short post-match wrap where there was very little to talk about, I'm going to love you and leave you again. My next vlog will be Chelsea away on Sunday. Game's coming thick and fast. But until then, please remember, keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing, keep telling your friends about me. But most of all, don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.